Hi guys, and welcome to this video tutorial, brought to you by tastytutes.com. Today I want to talk about drop shadow effects in Photoshop, particularly on block objects like the ones you see here. I want to share with you some of my recent applications of drop shadows in Photoshop. Of course, I will be showing you how I created some of my alternative drop shadows, but the point of this video really is to get you thinking about your approach and ask yourself, do you want to use the default drop shadow setting or do you want to create something a little more fresh and unique? So hopefully, with some of the techniques I'm about to demonstrate, this will get you experimenting too and hopefully you can come up with some interesting results of your own. For those of you that are already familiar with Photoshop, you will already know the classic layer style application of a drop shadow. For those of you that are not, normally to create a drop shadow you use layer styles. For example, if you double click on the layer in the layers panel, you will bring up the layer style and you can simply apply a drop shadow to an object by tweaking the box and you can customize the options such as the opacity, distance, spread, etc, etc. Now, this is fine and works well in lots of designs, but that's kind of the point here. You see it a lot and you see it everywhere. So recently, I have been experimenting with different ways to create drop shadows that don't necessarily look the same. As you can see here, there are a few examples of alternative drop shadows you can use in Photoshop. Feel free to download this Photoshop file. The link is in the description. Now, to create most of these, I used various blur filters in Photoshop. Each one of these shadows started off as a simple black shape, but applying a different blur filter, you can get different results every time. And for the sake of this tutorial, I have labelled each one. For example, we've got radial blur, motion blur, box blur, and above we have some Gaussian blur applied to that background. And if we come over to the corner lift, well, this one doesn't even have a blur. This is just a simple block um, that is creating the effect. So now I'm going to demonstrate how I created each. So I'm going to come up to my demo file here and I'm going to pull out my layers so I can see exactly what I'm working with. And we're going to start with the circle curves. Now, as you can see in the layers panel, I've got my photo image here and I've got my top image and my bottom image. I'm just going to double click that and call this base so it's um, a lot more clear. And This could be our image on top. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to grab my elliptical uh, marquee tool and I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to draw myself a tall, thin ellipse and I'm going to press shift command N to create a new layer. I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to come down to my color picker and make sure it's black and get uh, my paint bucket and fill that. Um, hmm, that's odd. Okay, by the, by the looks of it, it's currently on 20%, so I'm just going to pull that to 100 and drop it in again. There you go. Press command D to deselect and V to pull up my selection tool and I can move this around and I'm just going to place that on the edge and I'm going to Press and hold Alt, click and drag, and I can pull this um, ellipse over and quickly duplicate that layer. And with that, I'm going to come over to my Layers panel and just press Command E, and that's going to flatten those two objects together. Simple. Okay, so I'm going to apply a Gaussian Blur to these. So I'm going to come to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm just going to tweak the blur here. I'm going to go for something around, let's let's try 45 for now. Okay, and as you can see this is actually on the top of our image, so come over to our layers panel, I'm going to click and drag this under our base and you can immediately see that we've got a bit of an effect here, but that's a bit too much. Um, what's good about all these effects is it's got to be quite quite discreet just to give that authentic illusion. So I'm going to press Command T to toggle the size of this um, new shadow we've created. I'm just going to pull it in a little bit and using the arrow keys I'm just going to move that shadow left and right and as you can see here it's kind of spilling out onto over the top so I'm just going to pull this down a little bit in line with our object and again there. 
and press enter and you can see that there is our shadow now that it's up to you it's up to you how strong you have that shadow in the background but I normally like to have it quite subtle so I'm just going to press 40 and that will change the opacity to 40 percent and that is the first shadow technique and that does it for the circle curves now as you can see here we've got the vertical horizontal and single to create these is basically the same as what we just did but just rotate the rotate the shadow and just create one object for that so the next one I'm going to show you is the corner lift this um, this corner lift um, effect here it's done quite simply so again we've got our image here to do the corner lift you're going to need a flat object so you're going to need to flatten these images first so I'm just going to press E so you've got a flat image and the reason why it needs to be flat is because we're going to apply a distortion to this we're going to come to edit we're going to come to transform and we're going to come to warp now using the warp means that we can you know we can bend we can actually bend the image however we like so we're just going to bend the image slightly up so it looks like the bottom right corner is just coming up off the canvas I'm going to press enter and then come over to my lasso tool I'm just going to start from here I'm going to click I'm just going to choose an angle and bring it over there double click so we've got our selection and I'm going to press shift command N and create a new layer and I'm going to fill that with a, a black and press command D to deselect and I'm going to drag this layer in the layers panel underneath our shape and there it is immediately you've got that sort of corner lift and again I'm just going to hit 40 and change the opacity of that drop shadow that's looking quite far out so yeah you can you can tweak it you've got your shadow underneath so by using it you can you know you can use your discretion and uh, change the position of the shadow to get that effect so that is the corner lift effect next up we are going to create our radial blur the radial blur is the drop shadow which kind of gives the illusions of the bottom left and right page just lifting up off the canvas here and you can see that we've got a little bit of a curvature here of the drop shadow this is easily achieved if we come to our radial blur okay here we have our images here again now to create the initial shape underneath I'm going to use the pen tool so I'm going to click on the pen tool and I'm going to start from above in the top left hand corner I'm going to click once and come down and click again and I'm going to come to the center of the of the image and just a couple of mil underneath I'm going to click and hold and drag to the right and that's going to give a bit of a curvature to our selection there and then I'm going to come over again to the right and just click once and that should apply that curve to our selection I'm going to click on the top and close our selection by clicking that top left node then I'm going to right click and click make selection click OK and that's going to make a selection there very cool so I'm going to press shift command N to create a new layer and I'm going to press G to pull up our paint bucket and because the black is already selected that's going to be nice and easy I'm just going to hit that press command D to deselect and V to pull up my selection tool so what I can do is I can move this around a little bit now I'm going to use a radial blur and the radial blur is normally used in um, in proportion to the actual canvas so you'll see what I mean in a sec so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my drop shadow to the far left I'm going to come up to filter and I'm going to come to blur and hit radial blur and I'm going to change the properties of radial blur oh look it's on 15 that's what I want so I'm looking for about 15 here and I'm going to click OK and you'll see what has been applied the radial blur has just created this effect here on that black shape so I'm going to come over to my layers panel and drag it behind my image and just put that in place and by pressing 40 I can decrease the the opacity of that drop shadow and you know there it is I could be happy with that I mean if you're not happy with the shadow coming out of the top there you can just press E to pull up your eraser tool and I can just get rid of that I can just get rid of that 
so we've got that nice drop shadow in the in the bottom there and that's our radial blur drop shadow and next I'm going to show you how to create the motion blur this if we come to our example you can see we have two here we have a minus 90 degrees and a minus 45 degrees I'm going to show you how to create the minus 45 degrees so if we come to our demos and let's get up our motion blur you can see that we have our drop shadow object which I showed you how to create before we're going to come to filter come to blur and hit motion blur and I'm going to look for something around 200 and make sure that that is set to minus 45 and I'm going to click OK and in our layers panel I'm going to drag the shadow underneath our image above and I'm going to move this into place here and again I'm going to hit 40 and that's going to change the opacity to 40 percent and by using my arrow keys I can pretty much move this into place here now again we've got some spillage over the top so I can press E and I can get rid of that very very easily and I might just want to touch up the shadow here just to make it look a little bit more different something I'm happy with and let's just hit 60 because I think 40 percent was a little bit was a little bit light for that and there you go there's our minus 45 degree drop shadow and finally I'm going to show you how to create the last drop shadow effect we are going to create the box blur effect now if we come over to our examples let's pull this over so you can see I'm going to create this box blur here which is given the illusion of the bottom left right and top right of the corner pages just lifting off the canvas there and this one can be done quite simply by coming over to our drop shadow object we have here. I'm going to quickly grab my lasso tool by pressing L. I'm just going to quickly trim the top off at an angle and press delete. Command D to deselect. V to put up my selection tool so I can move this around. And I'm just going to press Command T so I can toggle the scale. I'm just going to lift it up ever so slightly. Move that into place. And then I'm going to come to filter, blur, box blur. I'm going to try and get something around 100, that's fine, okay, and I'm going to move that underneath the object, and there we have it, use my arrow keys just to refine the positioning, and that is roughly about it, but there's too much spillage going over on the side, so I'm going to press Command T, and just tweak the scale of it, so I can make it a little bit more discreet, that's it, press Enter, and then hit maybe around 60% on this, so it's not too light. And there you go, really. That is our box blur effect. And there you have it. That is how you can achieve some alternative drop shadows in Photoshop. And these are just a few examples. With a bit more experimentation, you could achieve a variety of effects. I hope this has inspired you to think more about drop shadow effects and not just going with the same default drop shadow in Photoshop. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as there will be lots more videos like this coming soon. And if you're interested, hop over to my website at tastytutes.com. You can see more videos just like this there. And from there, you can follow me on Twitter where I'll be talking about various creative topics. Hope to see you there. Don't forget, you can download these examples covered in this tutorial in the description. So have fun guys, and I'll see you next time.